Greetings, welcome to Lab 2, Part 3. So in this part, we're going to go ahead and take a look at this um, exercise 3.5. It has to do with the GRE again, which is why we've got the little joke here. Uh, for many of you, you'll be going on to graduate work. Highly encourage you to do that. It's well worth it. But uh, one of the hurdles that some of us have to pass in the process of getting to graduate school is taking the GRE, which if you don't know about that, it's kind of like the SAT uh, for getting into grad school. All right. Well, let's go take a look at the problem we're going to look at. I've already gone ahead and posted it up into my R markdown file in R Studio and opened up a couple chunks and kind of got that ready. So if you want to pause for a moment, pause the video and go and get caught up on that, I've been simply cutting and pasting from the PDF version of the textbook into my R markdown file. I have to do a little bit of editing, cleaning it up. It doesn't co copy over, you know, real clean, but uh, it's definitely saves you a lot of typing, so you might want to do that. Okay, so uh, this is GRE scores part two in exercise 3.3. We saw two distributions for G GRE scores. One was for the verbal and the other for the quantitative part. We want to use this information to compute each of the following. A, the score of a student who scored in the 80th percentile on the quantitative reasoning section, and then B, score of a student who scored worse than 70% of the test takers in the verbal reasoning section. Okay, so before we get going on these problems, I want to go back over to the whiteboard for a moment and I'll have a little discussion about quantiles versus um, uh, percentages or probabilities, okay? So let's let's do that real quick here. Let's open up a, a whiteboard here and let's draw ourselves just a generic normal distribution for a moment, all right? Oh, my pen keeps going to three for some reason. Oh, I don't know what's up with that. Let me go shrink my line a bit there. Okay, so let's draw ourselves a generic normal distribution. Let's have a little discussion about what we mean by areas, <coughs> excuse me, probabilities, and what we mean by positions on the on the, the the actual thing. So, if we want to calculate the proportion of values that fill in this shaded region right here. In other words, just like we've been doing in the previous problems, if we want to know what the area under the curve is right here in this, this shaded region, well, to do that, we know that we're going to go ahead and either use the table, which I don't advise. <laughs> I advise using um, our studio to do that. But if this area right here, if this area was, say, just to... to make it so that we have some numbers here. Let's say this area was equal to 0.75 or 75% of the data fell below that point. <clears throat> and then what that says is, is that the probability or the proportion of X values that is less than whatever this number is right here, we'll come and fill in that blank in just a second, is equal to 0.75. In other words, that's the area statement, okay? And so this point right here turns out to be whatever that number or whatever that value of x is. And so this value right here, that's not an area, that's a position on the axis. Okay, so just so we have a number there to, to kind of make this, this part of this thing make sense here, let's say that that was uh, 13 doesn't matter just making up a number for the moment okay so if that was equal to 13 what that would say is that the proportion of x's that are less than 13 is equal to 0.75 okay now keep that idea um, in your forefront while we're working through this this particular exercise because there's two basic ideas there's the idea of position and there's the idea of area area corresponds to probability so the probability in a normal distribution corresponds to the area under the curve. And the position right here, with the position, typically we're going to say that that's a quantile or a percentile. Um, one, that's, a, that's an A there, really. There we go. Many books call these quantiles. Ours doesn't choose to do that, but I'm going to remind you of that. Oh, that is just bad. I'm going to... Get out my eraser here and clean up my mess and rewrite quantile. So the main thing that what I'm trying to get across, other than that I'm, that I'm not doing very good at writing on the board today, is that you have two fundamentals that you, you need to know. You have a fundamental that gives you the probability, the area, and then you have this other number which is, gives you the position, sometimes referred to as a quantile. 
And I, that's the way I learned it, and so it tends to be the language I use, and so I want to make sure you know that. So if I say quantile, you know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about the position. Okay, let's go back to the problem statement here. Let's go back to our studio, and let's go tackle part A. So in part A here, they say they want the score of a student who scored in the 80th percentile on the quantitative reasoning, okay? Well, <clears throat> what would they mean by that, okay? Well, so if we were to get the 80th percentile, that's really the same thing as saying the 80th quantile. Percentiles and quantiles mean the same thing. So they're looking for a position here. In other words, they gave us the number, or excuse me, the area. They gave us the area is 80%, and what they want to know is what is the percentile that, that goes with that. Okay, so let's, let's go back to the whiteboard, and now let's, let's take on this problem, and we'll draw... These, the actual normal distribution that we're going to be working with here. And so, um, one more time, just need real quick to make sure I grab the right model here with you. So, they say for the student scores, a student scored in the quantitative reasoning. So, we got to pick the correct model, right? Notice we've got two models here one for verbal reasoning and one for um, quantitative reasoning. And so, the GRE was distributed normal 462 by 119 for the verbal and 584 by 151 for the quantitative, okay? All right, so make sure we get the right model. Take that back with us here. So here we go. We're gonna go ahead and make ourselves a drawing of the model that we want, okay? So in this particular case, we know that this is a normal distribution with a mean of 584 and a standard deviation of 151, right? And what they want from us is they're looking for in this case, here's X again, is they want to know what is that position on the axes right here so that the shaded area, this area shaded in right here is 80%. So that all that little, that area that I'm shading in there, that that's 80% of the area, okay? So we want that area right there to be equal to 80 percent or as a decimal point we want that to be 0 0.8 okay all right so again as we just did back in the opening um, discussion there what this is really saying is that we have the probability of x being less than blank is equal to 0.8 and so or 0 0.8. So what we're looking for is this number right here, and that number corresponds to this position on the axis. Now, as it turns out, it's quite handy in our, in our studio to do this. We saw that to find the area, the area tool in our studio was equal to P norm. And it's going to turn out that the position or the quantile or the percentile tool, the position tool, is going to be Q norm. Which, you know, if you go back to my thing about quantiles, that makes sense. Q for quantile, right? So Q norm for quantile or for percentile. So all we've got to do for Q norm, as it turns out, it's actually pretty straightforward. Q norm, we put in the area to the left. Remember, this is a left tailed program, just like our table. So we put in the 0.8. And then we put in our mean, which in this case is 584. And then we put in our standard deviation, which is 151. So the generic version of, of Q norm is going to be you give it the area. That's the first thing you give it, whatever area that you were given. That's an A there, really. Oh, some days I wonder why my hands don't cooperate like they're supposed to. There we go. That's the area. And then we give it back the mean and we give it back the standard deviation. So we give it those three pieces of information and it's going to give us back the position there. So let's go back into our studio and let's go ahead and do that. So I've already opened up a chunk down here. I got it all ready to go. And I just got to type in Q norm. Put in 0 0.8 just to make it look like a 0 0.8 there. And then we'll put in our mean, which is 584. and then our standard deviation, which is 151. Okay, let's go ahead and run that chunk, just so we can see what that came out to be. 
and it tells us that the score is 711.0848, um, so basically 711, okay? So in order to get into the 80th percentile, you needed to score basically 711, or um, sometimes we always we we'll typically round up to make sure we're actually you know in the 80th percentile. So some books or the answer may say 712, okay? I'm going to go ahead and run with 711. If the book says different, too bad for them because I like it better. So you need to score better than 711 to be in the 80th percentile. Okay, cool. All right. So part B, they say the score of the student who scored worse than 70% of the test takers in the verbal reasoning section. Okay, very important. So we're in verbal reasoning this time, so that means we are working with the different normal model, the second normal model that was given to us, okay? All right, so they scored worse than 70% of the test takers. What that means is that 70% of the folks are above them. So let's let's go make a drawing and see if we can get a drawing that, to make, make sense of this, all right? So let's go ahead and clean our, our whiteboard up here. Okay, so again, let's start off with drawing our model here. So I'll start off with always, always, always draw the normal distribution that models our situation. And in this case, it's what? This is a normal model with the mean of 462 and a standard deviation of 119. Okay, so that means that the mean was right there at 462 and the standard deviation is 119. Now, this time, <clears throat> what they're asking us for is they're saying, I want the position down here so that what? 70% of the people scored better than me. So this area that I'm shading up here, that's the 70%. In other words, you know, I didn't do very well. And so the area above me, or this area right here, is 70%. Okay, so now notice what that means then is that how much is left over to be down here in this tail? Because that's really the number I need, don't I? I need to know what the lower value is, or the left tail, because remember, um, both P norm and Q norm are going to work on left tail, OK? So well, we know what that area is, because we know that the total area has to come to 1. So that area has got to be 30%. Because what, 30% plus 70% comes out to be 100%, doesn't it? So the question, let's go back to the question for just a moment here. So our question kind of looks like this. The probability of x being less than blank is equal to 0 0.3. And when we find that number right there, we'll know that 70% of the people scored above me. So to do that, that's going to be q norm. See, how do you put in the area? Let's see, the area was what? 0 0.3. And then put in the mean. Well, the mean of this distribution is 462. And the standard deviation is 119. OK? All right, so let's go type that in to our studio. So we come down here and we type in Q norm. Put in my area of 0 0.3 my mean of 462 and my standard deviation of 119, okay? All right, let's go ahead and run that chunk so we can see what that's gonna look like. And it looks like, yeah, <laughs> he didn't do very good on it, did he? We'll say he scored, what, to 399.59, uh, okay, so, 70% or better of the folks. So I'm going to round it off to a whole score again and say he scored about, what, 400 on the, let's see, this was, which was when this was on the verbal reasoning part, right? Poor guy. Needs to go study, right? Okay, cool. All right, so um, that takes care of 
of the problem 3.5. We'll come back here in just a minute. We're going to learn about luggage and we're going to go do problem 3.13.